And welcome to the Drive to Draw podcast. I will get the name right this week. Uh, Phil, welcome to the uh, studio. That's probably getting you back for calling me Paul at the end of the yeah, other I session did. there. Yeah, so I think you cut that one out. We though, so. did. Uh, mate, uh, what's, your, what's your good for the, uh, the week in the world of bowls? Well, round five here of, of our uh, podcast. Who said it wasn't going to last, Pete? Mate, I there thought we'd go. be struggling five after weeks. probably two, <laughs> but we've got to five. Here we are. Um, only one match in the Premier League. Yeah, let's get um, into Around the Grounds. We're going to go? Yeah, well, let's go straight okay. away, mate. Around the Greens. All right, mate, fire away. Let's uh, let's get into it. Well, we've only got the one game this week, Pete, and uh, you weren't involved in it. No. But, um, you could watching, have been. Watching from afar? Yeah. Um, Modbury versus Hawthorne, and uh, I think I tipped. I can't remember. Modbury, we'll have to listen back. Yep. Uh, 81, Hawthorne 72. Obviously a good game, Pete. Yep, so, they um, played under the dome. I did conf- oh, I did the, actually confirm dome. that okay, yet. I didn't realise that. Uh, I confirmed that on Wednesday. I sort of said, you yeah. know, were you guys on the grass? So the grass is struggling a little bit because of the where the dome is. And, oh, yeah. And they haven't quite as got as much sun on them. Sun, yeah. yeah. Um, so they decided to play under the dome. So probably a little bit of an advantage there for uh, Modbury. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the... Biggest winning ranks on the night was uh, Dory, Simon Dore, 25 over Cole Watkins, 15. Yep. And Lockie Bowman um, versus, now I will try and pronounce this, yep. Jason Walham, Walham, yep. 14. So ten, both 10 shot differences there. So um, only the one game this week. Um, do you want to fly into this week's game? Yeah, let's, uh, let's have a look at this week's games. I mean, obviously, we've spoken previously yeah. that it's been a little bit sort of disjointed. It's hard to um, keep up with. There's a whole heap of round one games being played tomorrow night. Um, obviously, Grange, Lockleys, Hawthorne, Adelaide, yep. West Lakes, Ascot, Somerton, Modbury. We've already done our tips on we've those done our ones. Tips. We know that one there. Round two, um, there's a whole heap of games that are going to be played, obviously, the following Friday night. And that's Adelaide Grange, Lockleys, Holdfast, Ascot, Somerton, Salisbury, West Lakes. But really, we're here to talk about round three, Saturday which is about three. where it's at. Yep. Uh, Somerton playing Salisbury at Somerton. Somerton for me. Somerton for you. Yep. West Lakes v Lockleys. Oh, Somerton for you. Uh, Somerton for me. Okay, no worries. West we- Lakes v Lockleys, Lockleys at West Lakes. West Lakes. West Lakes for me. Holdfast v Adelaide. Adelaide for me. Ooh, uh, Adelaide for me as well. <laughs> Tight one. We're playing Adelaide tomorrow night, so it's a bit of a, you know. Coming, You're in that one, aren't you? I am yep. playing in that yep. one. Coming from the, I would assume, slightly heavier surface, hold fast generally pretty quick. Yep. Be interesting to see how many players can adjust. Uh, Ascot v Modbury. Probably game of the round for me. I would think it is. Uh, Ascot for me. Yep. And Grange Ascot v for you. Ascot for me, <laughs> yes. And Sorry. Grange, no, 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 good to remind me of these things. And Grange v Adelaide. No, uh, oh, Grange. Uh, sorry, Grange v Hawthorne. Yeah, sorry, sorry, my apologies. I thought I had that wrong. No, no. Um, I'm going Grange. Sorry, Pete. No. Are you playing? Uh, not no, one. I won't no. be playing in that no. one. Um, but um, I have to go Hawthorne on that one, but only just. I couldn't tip Hawthorne with you out the side, Pete. Oh, fair enough. Uh, (laughs) The ladder at the moment really hasn't taken shape as far as the Premier League go because it's sort of two rounds down. But there are four four teams that obviously have played, and that's Modbury, Holdfast, Salisbury and Hawthorne. Yep. Modbury sitting top. Yep. Hawthorne, uh, sorry, uh, Holdfast sitting second. Salisbury sitting third and Hawthorne sitting fourth with only minor shot differences really yeah, making up the, yeah. the, the differences there. So yep. um, it's going to be interesting after the next couple of weeks, things settling down, see yeah, how, it all, right. how it all yeah, plays the, out. The uh, premiership table at the moment is irrelevant. You know, um, yep. It's just yeah nothing. So I didn't even look it up, to be honest. So. Are, you, are you surprised that there were so many round two games being put off as well as round one? I couldn't work it out, Pete. Well what that was, but um, I just couldn't follow it there for a while. But uh, we'll get into it after this week. We should be back on yep. par and uh, away we go. So, do you want to have a look at some of the teams, obviously, from Somerton because they did have to submit their teams for oh, round one? And, yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, Nathan Pedersen playing Gary Meekums. Oh, that'd be a good game, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be. Meekums is always around the mark, isn't he? And Pedo's, yep. you know, yeah. Pedo for me. Yep. Uh, Somerton for me. Uh, yep. In the second rink there, uh, Aworth v. Dorr. 
It's a big one too. Oh. Aworth, hell of a bowler. I'll take Aworth for me. I'm going to take Simon Dora on that oh, yeah? one. There. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Scott Taylor v Gavin Elliott. Don't know Gavin Elliott just offhand. I don't think. So I'll have to go with. Uh, Scotty, yep. Scotty, Taylor. Scotty Taylor, Luke Petersman playing three there, Scotty Colville playing two. So that's a fair uh, That's rank. a pretty handy yeah, rink, yeah, yeah. yes. Um, and uh, Josh Studham v jo- uh, Jason Wallhan, which I think you yes. were trying to pronounce Wallhan. a little bit earlier. That's him. Wallahan. Um, I'll go to Studs, I suppose, because I only don't know Jason, sorry. Yeah. But, no, um, no I'd, um, I'd probably go yeah. Jason there as well. Um, Westlakes v Ascot. Westlake, yeah, Ascot, wow. Mark oh. Haynes v Mitch Percy. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go Ascot there. I'll go Mitch. Yep, Mitch. Uh, Isaac Trenorden versus Sammy Dietrich. Sammy for me. Sammy for me there as well. In a close one, uh, Seamus Curtin v James Gregory. Seamus Curtin. Don't know much about him, but he's that New Zealand import. Import. Yep. 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 Uh, Sammy Denton playing three to him, so obviously pretty it's solid. Fair rank. Absolutely. Uh, and Josh uh, Choppy uh, versus Brett Davis. Some fireworks there. Oh, I might go Brett Davis there. I'm going to go Brett Davis there. Yeah. Anthony, Anthony Trelaw playing three to Brett Davis. Oh, Brett, yeah. Brett Baldy playing two. So yep. um, pretty handy rinks there. Absolutely. Again, probably could have been um, rink of the round. Uh, Hawthorne v Adelaide. Um, what do we got? Bowman v Hicks. That's Corey Hicks, that is. I'll go Lockie Bowman. I'll go Bowman very there. Very solid. Yep. Uh, Michael Lodge v Scotty Tholburn. Tholburn for me. Tholburn for me as well, but only just. Um, hard to tip against Lodgy and, and Darren Seagitz, but I reckon yep. Scotty might just have a little bit of firepower there. John O'Voit, obviously new to Adelaide, yep. playing Cole Watkins. John O for me. I tipped Adelaide, so I've got to have more Adelaide than Yeah, Hawthorne. I'm going to go Cole <laughs> to back up. Yep. Uh, yep. Had a bit of a shocker the week yep. before against Modbury, but only really just landed off of the uh, the, the flight yep. from uh, from uh, Queensland after the sides championship. May have had a little bit of a hangover too. So. <laughs> not Cole. <laughs> no, not Cole. Um, but no, I'd expect him to, yeah. to, to back up. So, yeah, in a tight one there. And uh, Matty Northcott taking on Charlie Hicks. I'll go Matty Northcott there. Yep. Um, Charlie, obviously, skipping his old man, playing three. Yeah. Very interesting, that one there. So many arguments. <laughs> Could be interesting, that's for sure. Uh, and then the last game of the round, Grange v Lockleys. Yep, I tipped Grange. Yep, so uh, Mark go. Evans v Theo Katsivas. Uh Mark Evans. Mark Evans yep. for me. Isaac Jessa v Stephen Jones. No, I've got Isaac. Yep. Isaac for me yep. there as well. Wayne Rudica versus Peter Thalia. Or was it Thalia? Yep. Um, Rudes. I'm going to go Rudy there as well. And Ben Bowman v Ash Halls. Benny Bowman for me. I think they'll do a clean sweep and clean up there pretty well. I think that one will be the tighter of all of the rings. Yep. But I, I reckon Benny Ash is, is great as well. Bowler. Yeah, absolutely. Great bowler. All right, mate. We'll, um, we won't see, obviously, uh, teams for round three. But obviously, uh, good luck to teams yep. competing tomorrow night. All right, let's move on to uh, Division 1. Division one, we had a few more games there. In round two. In round two. Summerton getting and up Modbury. over Modbury. Only by three shots. Mm. Um, yeah, so that was uh, Jason Hallows. Uh, it was 28 over Jose Gill was the biggest uh, rink, winning rink there. Yes. Um, then we had Port Norlunga, another close game, over Henley, 78 to 72. Yes. Uh, Port Norlunga, all those rinks were very close, so I didn't pick one out. It was only three or four in... Each one there, so yep. um, didn't worry about trying to name someone out of that one. Yep. Then we had Marion versus Woodville. This was uh, a little bit of a surprise yes. for me. I thought it might be a Could touch it, closer. I you might have even tipped Woodville. But yep. In a t- I don't, no, no, I, I reckon I tipped Marion, but I thought it yeah. was going to be a lot tighter. Yeah, so did I. Uh, 103 to 71, that is a, that's a fair hiding. Yep. Uh, Marion, we had Phil Ryan. I'm not a, uh, can't picture Phil, sorry, but 27 over Paul Bandick. 10, so yes. it's a good win. Um, then we had Tranmere over Ponham, uh, 97 to 72. And uh, we had uh, 
John Federson, Diesel Federson. Yes. Uh, 32 over Phil Hutchie was the biggest winning rink there. That's so, surprising. Um, Hutchie's usually uh, he's always around the, around mark, the mark, isn't he? Yep. And then you've got um, the last game is played this week, which is Millswood, Millswood versus Turek Friday night. So um, can't give you any scores there yet. No. Unless uh, I can uh, predict. <laughs> have a go at it, mate. See how you go. <laughs> um, Nos- Phil all Nostradamus. Right, here we go. Millswood, uh, 91. Yep. Turak, 103. Ooh, I'm going to go Millswood, 98. Turak, 81. Okay. Ooh, there you go. See how close we go. See how close we go. <laughs> we'll have to uh, put this on uh, repeat. Crystal ball. Absolutely. Uh, let's uh, talk round three before we talk the ladder there. Woodville playing Club Tramier. Woodville and Trent. I think I'm going to go Tranmere. I'm going to go Tranmere there as well. I'm going to go Tranmere. Um, they've started the season on a bit of a tear, and um, yep. I reckon it will continue yep. as well. Paynham versus Port Norlunga. Port Norlunga for me. I really think Paynham's going to struggle. Um, you know, nothing against them, but nope. I think they're going to struggle. Yep. Uh, Port Norlunga. I'm going to pick Port Norlunga there as well. Um, but the home ground advantage could play a little bit of a part. Yep. Even though Port Norlunga do have a synthetic surface, it's slightly different yeah, to what Paynham's yeah, is. Yeah. Um, and I'm assuming they'll probably water it at <laughs> 20 minutes to one and get the speed up in it. Uh, yes, if they do that. To, to get a little bit of uh, a bit of advantage there, but um, see how they go there. Henley v. Summerton, mate. Summerton for me. Summerton for me as well. Yep. Marion v. Millswood. This Marion. is probably game of the round yeah, for me. I, I think it's Marion for me, Um I think they're going to be top two. I can't see them doing anything else. Yep. Yep. We do actually have some um, uh, scorecards actually put in here, so we might actually have a little bit of a look at that. Okay. Uh, Brady Slater v. Stasinowski. Andrew Stasinowski. Andrew St- oh, yeah. Um, no, I'll go Brady, I think. Yeah, I'm going to go... Oh, no, I'm going to go Andrew. Okay. Team number two, Phil yep. Ryan v. Brad Holt. Yeah, don't know Ryan, and I don't know Holt, I don't think. Uh, I don't know much about, um, who do they play? Millswood. Millswood, yeah. yeah. Millswood, I don't know. So Millswood come up, so yeah, yeah, yeah. there are going to um, be some I'll names go Ryan, there. he had a big win last week, yep, so I'll and go Ryan. Tonks is in that side as well yep. with uh, Anthony Dev- yep. Devon and Cody Letton. I think Cody is uh, one of those up-and-coming juniors. Yeah, so yeah, I'm not 100% so. yeah. sure as well. Uh, team number three, Ash Close v John Wells. Got to go close. You'd have to go closey yeah. there for sure. Uh, and then team number four, Kenny Holtham, and uh, against Enyo Rossi. Well, it would be a tough game, um, but I'll go Kenny. Um, always around the mark, isn't he? He's a wily old bugger, <laughs> oh, yeah. Kenny. I've been on the receiving end a few yeah, times, yeah. and he's, a no, he's too, definitely yeah. plays some very, yep. very good bowls there. Yep. And the last game of the round to finish us off there was uh, Modbury and, and Turak. Turak. Yep. Uh, Modbury for me, at home, I think. Probably under the dome, maybe. Who knows? Possibly. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go Modbury there as well. All right, let's have a look at the ladder after technically round two, but there's obviously a few teams that have got to make up. Club Tramere with two wins from two losses. Summerton in the same boat, two wins and two losses. Marion sitting third with one win from one game and Millswood in the same boat from one, one win from one game as well. So... Yeah. The ladder's starting to take, a, li- take yep. a little bit shape, but I reckon by this time next week we'll have a bit better yeah, idea yeah, and definitely by the week after, uh, normal... normal Some uh, real good sides playing each other this week. Exactly. So we'll a look. Quickly, while we're there, still on the uh, Adelaide Metro, Prospect yes. Broadview have a fours tournament on the 4th of November, uh, Monday. So just give them a hoy if it's um, if it's not full. Yes. And one thing I've meant to um, mention last week, Pete, was... Yes. Renee, uh, wife of Eric Monty, yes. has started playing bowls. Wow. Um, first week, 30 to 8 win. Last week, 39 to 12. So, obviously, a lot more talent than Eric. So, that's <laughs> you, all I take you out could, of that. You could be right there. Um, <laughs> congratulations. It makes you want to come back, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, that, that you have big wins like that, yeah, and uh, you get absolutely. bragging rights, uh, you know, over the dinner table each <laughs> night there. So, you might be right. Um, big recruit there for uh, a couple of clubs, maybe. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, so, so she's starting to paint him. So uh, good luck to her. Absolutely. So, yep. Congratulations, obviously, go yep. to um, Renee there. All right, mate, let's get into Around the Regions.
All right, big fellow. We planned on having Simon Gita Johnson on uh, this week, but he's on the tractor and the really? harvest. Harvesting. Yeah, he sort of said that the reception would be absolutely okay. shies and housing. So <laughs> basically, uh, he put us on to Bob Scott. Bob uh, yep. wasn't available tonight, but he's uh, going to be on next week. Okay. Talk all things York Peninsula. And also, we're going to touch base with him being a successful member of that over 60s uh, national winning team up in uh, Queensland a couple of weeks ago. Very good. Look yeah. forward to it. All right, mate, let's get on to the bros- brosser and light, mate. I know you're itching to give us some results. <laughs> yeah, there's some uh, funny odd results. Um, firstly, we'll start with the Adunda. They were 98, defeated Kapunda, with, obviously without the Greens, 55. So it was a big win there for Yadunda, yep. um, who have recruited strongly. And yes. Aaron Jones and Jimmy Mader, both 20-plus uh, shots up in their rinks. Mm-hmm. And I, and I reckon I picked you under there, mate. Yeah, so did I. Yep. Um, and I think I got them all right this yep. week. Uh, Tanunda, 101 versus Freeling, the struggling Freeling. Keith Ward over Daniela Madalinski. Yes. Hopefully I've got that right. 19 shots up, um, which, yeah, I think I picked. Mount Pleasant versus Lindock, 65 to Mount Pleasant, Lindock 88. Uh, Darren Green, a mad North Adelaide man. Yes. Um, versus Bo Hambly, uh, 13 up. So, uh, good win there for Darren's rank. And the last game was the old uh, foes, Newry 65 versus Angerston. They're back in the winners list, which no doubt they will be, 104. Um, Liam Buckley, uh, great player up there, uh, versus Gary Chapman, 22 up, Liam. So, it's a big win uh, for Liam's rank. So, um, yeah, so that was a... And the table up there, it, like everything else, it's only a couple of weeks in, Pete. Yes. So we've got Lindock and Yadunda both on two wins, Tanunda and Angerston, and there's a couple others. I think Nuri are one and one. And uh, so the fours, you know, not really take anything out of that. So yep. anyhow, round three, we'll quickly run through and we'll have a tip on yeah, this, mate. Pete. Yeah. Kapunda versus Nuri under the, well, under what the is dome? it? The, uh, uh, well, the shed. Yeah, shed. Yeah. I'm going to go Kapunda. I'm going Kapunda at home. Yep. Um, the Greens are back. So yes, makes you a big d- difference. Yeah, the match of the round, this one, yes. at Yadunda, up at the uh, Onion Land. Um, Yadunda versus Lindock. I'm gonna Both go undefeated. Y- I'm going to go Yadunda. Yadunda for me at home. Yep. They've got an unusual carpet up there, still sort of sorting Working itself, itself out. Working itself out, yeah. yep. Yep. Angerston versus Tanunda on their new carpet up there. I'm going to go Angerston. Angerston for me. Yep. And Freeling, uh, bottom of the sort of table... Uh, clash here, though I don't think Mount Pleasant are quite second to bottom. They've won one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Freeling versus Mount Pleasant. Is it Freeling? Freeling? Oh, I'm going to go Freeling. On the Greens. I'm going to go Freeling. I'm going Mount Pleasant okay. over there. Um, quickly, I did get a little uh, text from uh, Matty Short. Yes. Uh, just to, We did mention it last week. The we Yalumba Day, 3rd of November, 9 30 for 10 o'clock start, $30 per person, one spot left. That's what he had on my little uh, text Notes. message. Yep. So, um, yeah, that okay. might be taken up, but um, we'll we can still, only try. We'll, we'll still pop it out there we for sure. It out there. Uh, mate, that's fantastic uh, having a look at uh, the regions, and I reckon we might have to start having a look at the hot shots, mate. Three, you know, two, three times in a row, and you never know. That looks a very nicely weighted bowl first up from Liam. Don't get much better than that. All right, mate, let's move on to the, some of the state events. The state mixed pairs is going to be played this weekend. All the draws have been out now for about a week or so. I had a chance to sort of have a, have a little okay. bit of a perusal through and see which groups are potentially the groups of death, I suppose, with three or four really, really good teams. I came across two that probably piqued my interest. In Section 12, we've got a family affair with all the Moffats being available Ooh. there. So... Um, I think the youngest Moffat is playing with Charlie Hicks, I believe it is. Oh, okay. Um, uh, so, and then playing, obviously, Anthony, and I'm not sure how to pronounce his wife's name, but um, uh, that should be very interesting yep. there. And the other big one uh, for me, apart from 
probably my group, um, which has got a, you know, I oh, play against Lodgy and Ann Onto, oh, okay. uh, myself and Kathy Miller. So uh, that'll be a tough one. It's probably the defending champs in section 18 uh, are going to come up against Karen Gatto and Isaac Trenorden. So that's probably the other one that I'm really looking forward to sitting back and looking at some of the results. Um, Trinity Gardens, I think, is being used. Hawthorne is okay. being used. Uh, I think Somerton and, and Holdfast are being used, I believe. Okay. Um, so good. get down to your local club if you're not playing this weekend. I'm sure most of you are probably going to be bowls out because there's a lot of players that played Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, oh, right, yeah. and now playing on Sunday. <laughs> um, so by the end of that, I think there's going to be a lot of people completely bowls out uh, by then. But... <laughs> Certainly good luck to everybody yeah, there absolutely. playing in that one there. All right, mate, let's move on to bowls tipping. All right, mate, we've got some results now. Um, obviously, with round one and two still being in progress, a bit like our tipping, yep. it's been all over the place. But we've got a... Top three or top four leaderboard at the moment. We've got, um, is it FZ22Q, sorry, GQ sitting top of the ladder at the moment with 10 points. Bowls Deep is sitting second uh, with eight. And there's about four other teams. We've got MHP. Okay, e, uh, 3R, I'm, sh- I'm assuming that's <laughs> poker, uh, sitting on eight. Bruce McAvaney. Um, Bruce. Maybe a, a, a keen bowler. Um, <laughs> Special, you're right. Uh, sitting on eight there. A one two three one zero six eight four eight one. I have no idea why uh, they are. Whether that's just a random generated number. Uh, Millswood Ian sitting on eight as well. So okay. again, starting to take shape there. Um, because round one and two are still open at the moment, I reckon you could probably sneak in a couple of um, tips. Obviously, for games that yep. are still to be played before tomorrow night for round one and then obviously before next Friday night for round yeah. two. Yeah. So you can still get involved if you want to get involved with that. I believe it's only about $25. Portion of that is going to be pulled for yep. a, uh, a a prize to an up-and-coming junior or a new junior player, um, or we might pull it uh, as part of a competition as well. So good luck very to good. everybody involved. All right, let's take a very quick You're break, mate. listening to the Drive to Draw podcast. <laughs> We'll be right back after this short break. All right, now, as most of you probably would have noticed, we've skipped the players' interview tonight. With a few players playing, obviously, tonight to make up Wednesday and then a few players playing tomorrow night, they've had to move stuff around and our interviewee uh, for tonight wasn't available because of that. So uh, we're going to put that off to next week. I'm going to try and get on the green over the next couple of weeks and interview a couple of players, um, you know, so that way we've got them uh, there and ready to go and um, and invite those, obviously, players to be on the show. So let's get into the extra ends, mate. No uh, first up, tournaments. Hope Valley, looks like. Open Fours Medley, Sunday the 24th of November, 9.30 for a 10 o'clock start. And the one I'm playing in, I'm going up there to Newry, yep. Cosmo Fours Tournament, Sunday the 24th of November, 9.30 for a 10 o'clock start. So um, just a couple there. So if anybody else, <coughs> pardon me, anybody else has got any of the tournaments coming up, let us know. Absolutely. Um, the Hope Valley one's always been a good one. I've been there a couple of times. The trifle is to die for. You know, oh, really? Oh, big, Love massive bowl right in the middle of the table, and away you go. And I have played in the Nuri Fours before. I reckon I might have played with I, you a yeah, couple of times yeah. or once before. Did we win it? No, I think we got <laughs> some money, but it was only a little bit okay. there. Um, we, we missed out on one of the Pairs games, I think it was. Probably mine. It might have been I yours. Think it was. Uh, and then I reckon we had to <coughs> basically me. go from there to a... Um, oh, we did too. A, um, yeah. uh, what do they, they call, call it? A Sunday comp. Sunday yeah. comp, yeah. yeah. Game. So, um, yeah, it made it interesting, that's for sure. Um, yeah, if you want to get involved, obviously uh, check the... Uh, Bowls SA site, yep. and also those clubs uh, would be more than absolutely happy to uh, to put in a team for that. Uh, 9.30 for 10am starts, yep. as we mentioned. Yep. All right, mate, let's move on to some national events. 
probably been the one thing that's been in front of mind, I suppose, for the last couple of weeks there is the National Sides competition. Um, just want to run through a couple of the results there. Uh, South, Team South Australia defeating Queensland in round number one. Go through a couple of the rinks here, mate. Um, Aaron Sher- Sheriff taking on Nathan Black. Um, let's have a look at this team here. Aaron Hewitson, Barry Lester, Nathan Rice and Aaron Sheriff taking on Will McFarlane, Isaac Trenorden, John O'Voit and Nathan Black. Queensland get the chocolates, 20 to 16. A couple of ordinary rinks there. A couple of ordinary <laughs> players as well. Wow. Um, really. Unbelievable. Well done to, yeah. um, obviously, uh, South Australia yeah. there, uh, but also to Queensland. Uh, the big one for me uh, was Wayne Rudiker. We have to make mention he, right here, right yeah, now, playing four, 400 games, yeah. plus the extra ones that have yep. obviously made 406, him. 4.06, and I think he's the leader now. Isn't the so, uh, most yep. capped South Australian yep. player. Um, had a huge win in round number one, 24 to 8. Uh, Wayne right. Rudiker, Brett Davis, Ben Bowman, and Stewie Forbes, the mayor of oh, the, the mayor, mayor of Newry, um, obviously getting the chocolates there over Sean Baker, Sean Ingram, uh, Nick Gosley, and Dale <coughs> Whitting, <coughs> Whittingly Sh- Shillington. Wow! Um, but uh, obviously Rudy was well and truly up for it, and so was his teammates on this occasion. And in the third rink, there, Scotty Tholburn just going down ever so slightly. To Kane Nelson there, 16, 16. Um, Scotty Thorburn, Mitch Percy, Cora Hicks, and Sammy Denton uh, taking on Brandon Wilson, Jamie Anderson, Brett Wilkie, and Kane Nelson. So some very, very yeah, good results goals, there. Yeah, too, exactly yeah. right. So um, the Australian sides team there, The I won't go through all of the rounds there, but South Australia ended up finishing in fifth position, S- played seven, won four, <laughs> lost three, um, with 12 points, which was pretty much all equal with Victoria West and Western Australia as well. So only shot difference really uh, separating them there and also points in the rinks as well. So well done to South yep. Australia in the men's. All right, let's move across to the women's. Unfortunately, the first couple of rounds, some couple of tight games, a yeah. couple of games that blew out a little bit. Yep. But I finally got on the board in round number four against the Northern Territory in impressive fashion, actually. Yeah, one... Comfortably, didn't they? They did Very seventy. Uh, what was it? Seventy-seven to thirty. Yeah, thirty-nine nine or something, or something yeah. like that. Yep. Yep. Um, so in this occasion, Kate Argent Bowden thirty-three six wow. against Colleen Orr um, in uh, the second rink. There, Laney McGorman uh, twenty-three fourteen against uh, Alyssa Rigoni, uh, and then obviously um, uh, Katrina Green getting yep. a big win there. Uh, 21 to 12 against Anita Rook. Um, so very good, very very good. I think as the women's championship sort of went on, the South they Australian better, team got better, better, better and better. better. Um, yep, just Finished. looking up the ladder up there, they ended up finishing six, six. on this occasion. Um, uh, played seven, lost. Uh, sorry, won three, lost four. Just on the wrong side of the ledger yep. there again. Points and uh, match points and rink uh, uh, score difference was probably the difference there in probably getting them up to around about third or fourth. Um, but again, Queensland obviously taking the chocolates yep. there. So And Victoria in the men. Um, congratulations go to all those players. Yeah. I mean, Craig Mills in the Victorian side. And was the... Uh, Player of the uh, biggest the winning rink. Rink yeah. over the... Uh, Didn't get beaten. No, yeah. uh, over the championships yeah. there. So congratulations there to Millsy. We'll try and get Millsy on. Obviously, still playing SA, some yeah. bowls there, and obviously yep. Victoria. Yep. A bit like Nathan Black. Yep. Um, so really looking forward to having a bit of a chat there. Um, well done to all the teams. I, I did sort of mention, I think someone sort of uh, commented, I sort of mentioned that it's a fantastic achievement to get one cap, but oh. Rudy getting 400 oh. plus uh, is an impressive achievement. Absolutely. We'd love to get Rudy on as well, just to have yeah. a chat about that Great as well as to, uh, his Great first bike. state game and what he thought and obviously a big, big win there. Later, yeah, yeah, exactly right. All right, mate, let's uh, finish off with a couple of hot topics. Uh, Bowls Australia sent out a survey about <laughs> comps. Uh, my big one or big suggestion is potentially bringing in a split times format where you can get your social bowlers here because we have the lunch break, which is yep. at around about the – Two hour, two hour fifteen mark. Yep. Um, so it does signal a a, a break in the uh, play. Yep. Could we have a split times where in the lower divisions, especially with some of the older players, 
where they maybe play a, a pairs or a triples uh, format where they are playing to that time limit. Uh, and then once that crew has finished, they can use that rink then for a second crew that comes in. It cuts down the amount of time that yeah. you're here. That's you might get some. You might get some of those social bowlers yep. that are playing night hours, you know, that just wanted that that social atmosphere, I suppose, yeah. and they don't want to commit to a whole afternoon yep. of of bowls. Which I know the bowls tragics love doing that, but you know, with some older players, um, it keeps them in the game for a little bit longer, brings in the new ones, yep. and the older ones can guide them. Yeah. For that competition. Probably not a bad idea. Yeah. I'm not big on the break myself. Um, I think if one turn three, yep. probably should keep going right through, yep. play their ends and, and see you later, you yep. know. But, yeah, that doesn't sound a bad idea. Yeah. yeah. Just a suggestion. Yep. Um, I know tennis did it for a little while there to try and keep players in the game. Yep. There may be an opportunity where you can schedule it where there are some games where you do play the whole way through. Uh, as a double, double yep. header, so to speak, and there are some days where you only play for your two, two and a half hours and you're done. I think it only helps clubs membership-wise, you know, you sell... Brings a, more people in the game, basically. Yeah, and yeah. You, you sell a yep. shirt, you have more people yep. uh, playing the game. So that's probably my suggestion there, that if anyone from Bowls Australia or Bowls SA is listening, that maybe that's something that they could uh, look to implement over the next couple of years and yeah. trial it. Um, yeah. Especially looking at some of the divisions this year, it looks like you know some of them are being compacted into yeah, yeah. north, south, east, and west, which I think is a great idea. You know, you don't yeah. travel as much, yep. but I think that next level, getting somebody into the game, and that yep. probably leads me into my next point of the hot topics was: should more be done to attract younger players or junior players to the sport? Maybe this is one way of doing it. Yeah, because everyone is looking for a shorter format. And that's what we're talking to Harrison last week. Yep, and, um, and Nathan Black the, yeah, the no, week before. Yeah, and Blackie. Um, both sort of suggested perhaps a sh- shorter format. Yep. You know, 50 over limit, you know, whatever, yep. in cricket, whatever. Yep. Um, 20 overs, whatever, yes. you know. It's getting shorter and shorter, isn't it? It is. Uh, I know with our social games, you know, during the winter, you know, you play what, 11 ends and 12 ends or 10 yeah. ends and 11 ends. So you've always got that half-time break yeah. in there no matter what. Yep. Yep. Can we leverage that? to get some of these younger players in. Or they might play a junior sport in the morning and then yeah. they can come along come and play, play the second game. Second game, yeah. yeah. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, that's my suggestion Food there, mate. Thought. Absolutely. You got any thoughts on that, mate? Any suggestions? No more than I've suggested. I think I, yeah, go along with that. Yep. Yeah, it's good. Absolutely. All right, mate. Uh, we better wind things up there. Uh, we don't have a guest to thank, but I thank you for coming along I, tonight. Thanks for having me. No. Um, Jacob's Creek this week, Pete. So <laughs> mate, trying to get these sponsors on board. Yep. Well, well, the plumbing and gas. On I, the, I did on see the that. Yep. yep. Um, yeah, any support, obviously, yeah. with uh, some sort of sponsorship. We'll put it on the screens. We have noticed that our viewership is obviously up there. But as per usual, you know, if you haven't liked, rate and subscribe, please do so. Those numbers not only help yep. us, but it helps with, you know, rankings. And then obviously when we get sponsors, we can show them that, hey, you know, we've got 200 members, yeah, we've got exactly. 500 watches, we've bit got 500 fun. listeners, and it is a little bit of fun. Yep. Mate, I haven't come up. Did oh, Pete? Still not. No. no? I, you know what? I forgot to ask No, nah, that's right. That'll be your <laughs> job for this week. Um, I'm just going to say keep on rolling, guys, and we promise to do better. We'll try. We'll try, exactly <laughs> right. Mate, thank you very much, Thanks, and uh, we'll see you all next week. Cheers. Cheers.